Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Woman's Cave. And yes, I get to say it because Jade is delusionally feverish. <laughs> you know, you guys, I just have Von Titus. Y'all been with him, here with me for like the last year and a half with all the Von Titus I have. I'm actually on doctor ordered like vacation, which I, I guess I shouldn't be working, but I am. So, you know. Yeah, I was okay. She still showed up to work. That's just amazing to me. Anyway. <laughs> So since she's oh, on I'm Jade. order vacation, I'm gonna try to get over banter. Yes, Jade. I'm Jade, though. I'm Jade. Oh right, and I'm Lenona. Thank you for remembering to introduce ourselves. High five High on the professionalism. What? We getting there. We get. I'm sorry. That just Thank you for taking my spot with dancing today. I appreciate. It. I don't have the energy. It's a chair. It's. it's I'm sitting oh, in your chair because okay. I'm normally sitting over there, but I'm sitting in your chair. Okay, that's. Is that's like a minute of banter, right? Wait, but you you didn't say you're Lenona. I did say I'm Winona, but we did have you? books. Yes, I'm okay, Winona. So yeah, you know the narcissist you. said that she has Winona. Okay, okay, go Let's for go it. Go ahead and do the books. Book. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do. We have, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. I actually said with other life lessons. Yo, Proud of you. No. And I thought being grown up was easy, and I thought I could juggle it all, and I thought I did my journey alone. Jade's favorite book. The Misfit Guides, Assassin. Oh, wait, this is out of order. Assassin Sway. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. The Misfit Guides, the cocktails, the soirees, and the LBD. Yes, that means little black dress, not little black daughter, as Jade's dad thought. But hey, it got him in public. It got him in print, right? We should all make that mistake. And I thought I had it all figured out. Yes, since I said it's Jade's favorite book, I'm going to be like Hollywood. This face needs to be a showrunner. No, it doesn't. Just think no, about it. Showrunner. It's a. It's a Dead and I thought dead. he was the one. We all have done that and then figured out that he wasn't. And then I am the author of the Widow's Debt series here, two of the seven. And, oh, oh, wait, wait. Can I not just forget? Is it the magazine? No, it is not. Uh, oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought the workbook. So if you are looking to do, like, business or get over trauma, there you go. The workbook. All right. Uh, is it wait, magazine not. time? It's magazine time, Jade. Go for it. Magazine time. The 25 hottest. This is like the pre-ordered copy, so you can't get it yet, but we will officially do a whole launch dance and everything. But you guys aren't here to hear about us. Uh-huh. Oh, no, you are not. You will not cut it. Hold on, wait. You can find out everything we're doing on andwethought.com along with Just Right Life. Okay, Thank so you. you guys aren't here to hear about us. You're here to hear about our wonderful guests. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Tamika Newhouse, and I'm very excited. I'm just sitting over here listening to y'all just act the food. <laughs> y'all been friends uh she oh. was born and we became friends that's yeah, how it, we it makes sense it makes sense i was picking up on that like from the wound type connection yeah, yeah. that was great yeah, yeah i'm gonna know what her natural hair looks like she know what mine look like it's horrible but oh lord oh y'all yeah, know each other real secrets okay <laughs> some of them shall stay where they are like greece the secret in greece shall stay where it is um <laughs> It was a good secret, though. <laughs> but it'll stay where it is. Anyway, we're not here to talk about us. As we said before, Tamika is here to promote. I really just said she's here to promote. I have never done that before. I've always jumped in with a nice question. And right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got a little lazy. Hold on. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm backing it up. I'm backing it up. Tamika right. does a lot of wonderful things. And she did not say any of it in her introduction. So I'm going to be a little silly and be like, can you go back and do your introduction again? Okay. So, yeah. So I, I guess I'm somewhat important, you guys. So first and foremost, I'm a writer. Um, I have 16 books out. I'm also a publisher of Delphine Publications. Um, I have a media company. I'm a screenwriter. But I also produce Black Writers Weekend, which is the largest gathering for Black creatives in film, also in publishing. It happens in Atlanta every June. So I'm just like an octopus. My hands and all kind of different things. I'm all over the place. You're an entrepreneur. Like, that's what we do. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Like, I'm obsessed with, you know, seeing the things in my hand become reality. So it's sometimes it's hard to just be like, okay, I'll just keep dreaming about it. No, I kind of want those things to be my reality. So it comes with a lot of hard work. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Exactly. Lona, you got some questions? Oh yeah, of course I have questions. I know you I'm not giving you questions, Feverhead. That is rude. Wow, that's rude. Anyway. So 
first of all, you said that you're a writer, so we have to go into books. So how many books have you written? And I think, I think possibly you have a new one coming up. Uh, yes, uh, well, I've written 16. Um, I started, I got published when I was 20. I uh, know when I was 21, I'm sorry. Um, and I started with a self-published book called The Ultimate No-No. And that book really kind of just skyrocketed a lot of different things and opportunities for me. Within nine months, I had released a second book. And also, I had ended up getting a book deal without an agent for The Ultimate No-No. So that book was acquired. Um, and for like, set, that book is what really changed everything because for maybe two years that books was on the shelves everywhere and I mean everywhere and not just here in this country so it, it allowed some doors to open up um I published more ended up launching careers of so many different writers from romance to Christian to sci-fi um and I started bringing on writers back in 2009 even to now to this day um and what, what I, how I got into producing Black Writers Weekend and producing the award show, um, it all came from wanting also to have a platform for us to talk about our books beyond just online. So that is, I guess, like a little bit in a nutshell of who I am. I just am a creator all, all, all across the board, not just a creator of words, but a visionary. So all of these visions and these ideas that I normally have, um, I work on them, like I, I, and I'm trying to not do all at once. So, <laughs> no, it's impossible not to do it all at once. It's just nice to meet someone when you say something, you dream it, and then you make it a reality. Cause you meet so many people who dream and they tell you about them, and then you're like, yeah, okay, I can make that a reality. Like, let's yeah, let's get yeah. to the top five points of what we need to do. Anyway, yeah. that's a whole nother. That's my that's my soapbox right there. Don't dream, make realities. Um, but, so you do a lot. Oh my goodness. How do you find downtime? Ooh, um, okay, well, I do sleep my regular amount of hours, uh, and I do watch TV, I watch TV, like TV for me is not, because I just want to watch TV, it helps me to escape, because a lot of my work is mental, so for my, my career, for me to stay sane in this process of writing, producing, being a leader for, I have seven employees, six interns. So all of these people have to be managed. Um, watching TV helps me to forget about my current space and my current world. And I also go to the gym. So I'll do, and, and that, you know, gets the endorphins going on. So I just practice a lot of good health, health you know, self-care, take baths every day and I relax, you know, in that sense. So just like I take time to work, I take time to wind down. I purposely do that. Yeah. Please, I have to scan. I think I should be writing some of this stuff down, right? Whatever I you're writing on... down. I mean, whatever, whatever you feel that makes you happy, or you you kind of get a sense of freedom from, you should be applying that. Um, and this is funny. I was talking with my friend, not a friend, but a um, a colleague just yesterday, where she felt she was lost until she recently found this old manuscript of hers and she just read it and she got re-inspired. And I, and I stated, well, the biggest thing when it comes to creators, if, if we're not creating, whether we're making money from it, from it or not, if we're not creating period, we're going to be unhappy. It's kind of like saying, it's like, like not eating, like you're just starving yourself. So we're going to walk around angry. So you know, like you, you, once you know yourself, you know, you know, you're the things that you like and enjoy, you'll find that, that good, healthy balance, you know, so that you can keep going and keep pushing and, you know, enjoy the process. All right. I have to say, because so, you went to the gym to relax, that explains the award, the red carpet pictures. I just wanted to tell you that. Anyway, Jane. What happened? I was <laughs> saying, because you go to the gym, it explains the red carpet pictures. You always look a door. Oh, those, those pictures actually could have been better. So I'm working on getting my summertime fine going on. So if it was, you know, I look good and all that, but I could be better. So I'm working on protecting. <laughs> Jade, you were saying. <laughs> Sorry. She's had me laughing. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> what can we expect from your Black Writers Weekend? See, the difference between Black Writers Weekend and most other events is um, they're boring. And mines are really, <laughs> you know, engaging and fun. 
Um, so the Black Black Writers Weekend, it, it involves entertainment, it involves art, um, and it involves cultural enthusiasts. So you have more than just book writers that are coming out. You have influencers, you get to meet celebrities. We may be having like the latest cast from the OWN Network come out or from TV One. It's like you, you get to uh, the whole shebang, not just experience book writers, but experience screenwriters, experience live music, experience poetry, because at the end of the day, those are all creators as well. So we, I basically create experiences centered around books. You have parties. Uh, we're going to have a book badge, which is going to be at the end bar um, in Atlanta this year. So we really kind of, we party like we're, like we rock stars too. Um, we have panels. Uh, we have pitch fests going on. We have producers and directors um, who have connections with studios or just streaming services where you can actually pitch your manuscripts and your projects to. We have publishers and agents who you can actually pitch your books to and, and possibly get um, them to further look at your project or give you um, some advice or even say, you know what, we're interested in this. Like, we want to learn more about you. So the difference between Black Rise Weekend and most is first, is that boring? Two, there are opportunities in the room. Um, and three, you can actually build relationships and connections. It's not just about getting off of the internet and meeting people that you friends with on Facebook, like at some of these other events. No shade, but that, that could be fun. But how does that extend and expand your reach? How does that make you grow and move forward? You have to make sure that when you're moving around and you're making these relationships and you're shaking these hands and you're spending money to go to these events that it's relationships in that room that's going to help you progress and move forward. It's more than just selling a book. You're not a salesman. Like Arthur's got to get that out of their head. You're not traveling with 30 books in your briefcase to sell those 30 books. Say, ooh, that was a successful weekend. Great. You made $300. Now what? And are those people going to read your book? Um, how did you pitch that? Did you take pictures with them? Did you encourage them to leave a book review? Or were you just so stuck on making sure that you made $300 from these books because you, you spent money on this plane ticket, you spent money on this hotel room? Like, what are you really in it for? That is the difference between Black Rise Weekend. I know that was so long, but. You know I'm falling in love, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was like, I think Tamika's going to be one of those new best friends. Oh no! <laughs> I just like to speak logic. I think when people are chasing their dreams or their purpose, sometimes they lack logic, and it frustrates me sometimes when we don't have the endurance or the consistency to see it through. When something doesn't go right, or it's a delayed, um, a delayed success, or whatever the case may be, we get discouraged and we quit, and then definitely it won't happen. So my, my, my advice when it does come to pursuing your dreams and your purpose, making those connections, those relationships, it should not be because of a, a particular motive or a move that you're trying to manipulate and conquer in that moment. It's all about the end game. You always have to be processing and thinking about where you're trying to go and where you're trying to eventually be at. It's a process. And if it's worth having you, you'll endure the process and you'll see it through. Okay, so you sound like Winona right there in that moment when you were talking about you have to see the end game, and I'm like, you're right, right, and it's absolutely wonderful to meet someone. That's, I like, I feel like I should virtually shake your hand. Let me shake your hand. There you go, virtually shaking hand. <laughs> absolutely, I, I totally agree with that. Winona, I'm throwing it back to you. Okay, first of all, I just want to say it's wonderful to know that I'm not crazy because I talk to other <laughs> authors and then literally around the world, and they'll be like, yeah, that's not how that goes, and I'm like. Mm. Okay, if you say so. Anyway, so you say um, so. yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's the my thing when when you're in that position and you're trying to speak and encourage people, you got to understand people are not going to process and think like you. So sometimes it can fall on deaf ears or resistant ears if they're not comprehending or understanding. Our logic may not be their logic. Our common sense is not their common sense. So it's like, well, how do we find that connection? So you'll find that at Black Writers Weekend, you find the common sense in those rooms. You'd be like, oh, so that's what she mean when you leave with media interviews set up or a, a connection with an agent or you met some book clubs or um, not only you just had a good time, like you actually partied and laid your hair down and, and had fun and you tore it up on the dance floor. When you go home, you're like, oh, okay, full circle. Exactly. This makes sense all across the board. 
I like the fact that we just want to split it up so that a writer can get everything that they need, including the relaxation. <clears throat> That's yes. not something that we are known for. We, we just like to party, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Oh, well, you, wait. you know, they say that, you know, the quiet ones, you got to watch those quiet ones. You got to watch the creative <laughs> ones. You know, we get down with the get down. Yes. That explains why you're, over, why you're taking over the entire, the entire market, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to take over the entire market. I'm just trying to contribute to what I want to see us, you know, progress as an individual. I mean, I mean, as a community, as a community. first and foremost, but trying it, it does come with being in that position but that's not what i'm aiming for not even a little bit i really don't even like to talk about you know me and why i'm starting and why i'm doing it. i don't even like to do that so with that being said it's i don't want to i don't want people to think that the intentions of when when not even myself and others when we put these events together that it's not necessarily for personal gain or for um, notoriety uh, recognize those who have that consistency, who has that passion, that love for their for what they're doing. And those are the ones you kind of need to pour into because everyone can be a leader. Everyone can be at the top and make it in decisions. We got to find those and pick and choose the the, the businesses we want to support, the events we want to, you know, to go to. And we got to put our, our support behind them and, and push forward and go from there. So that's all I'm trying to do is kind of trying to lead by example. I'm being signaled that I am over time, but I don't care because it's my show. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm long winded. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't even worry about it. I have um, two questions. And then, Jay, did you want to finish with your last question? I, I don't want to keep one you. One question, and then I have one question, then everyone's happy. Okay, I guess we're splitting it. So that means the A, B, and C. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Because Jade is ill today, I will respect her and do one question. <clears throat> okay. Um, I wanted to ask, because you think like me, I have to ask this question, and it's for my own personal gain, I'm not going to lie. Okay. But a lot of times I hear that in the literary community that being creative is for the art, not the money. So if you pursue such things as like networking or setting up these things, uh, these events, and then getting money as well, they feel like you have sold out. What do you say to them? Because I don't, I, I, I don't know what to say sold to them. Like, because you're a writer, you should be worried about your craft, not about That's who? the community forward, not about making the money, not about networking, just but who's trying to be, but who's money, you trying sold to be Jesus? Who's trying to be Jesus? <laughs> or who's trying to be Moses? See, this is the thing that I, that I love, but then I also despise about my people. Because you have those that did the work, they they pursued those challenges they took those risks and they made it work and they got into a position that they pursued that they earned and they got and then they, they they see other opportunities to grow and progress that does not mean that the rest of us who ain't even given half the effort that they gave can sit back and judge and say you shouldn't make that move because now you're sell, selling out of what what are they selling out of what are they why are they obligated to to, to pull you up by your boots and to help you make it. Anyone who has succeeded in, in their area, if they want to come back or, or reach back into where they came from in their roots and encourage others to come along, bravo. But if they don't want to, okay. That's, they don't have to. They're not required to do any of those things. They did the work. They dreamed. That is their success. That is their purpose. They don't have to come back and be like, okay, y'all now, y'all come on, after they did all the work. That's them. I don't think that sometimes it's fair for people in leadership and, and de definitely those who kind of just sit on the computer or on their social media and complain about this and complain about that or say, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, but then don't. And then have an opinion or even fix your mouth to have an opinion about somebody else's choices. I'm gonna need you to sit down. I'm gonna need you to focus on you. That's my response to that. I don't even know if I answered the question, but <laughs> that camera's not on me, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, that, is, that was hilarious. Uh, okay, so with that being said, where can people find you, and what's next? Um. Oh well, I am going to Chicago next week, so I'll be there for books and brunch, and I'll be signing copies of Plain Jane. 
which is, this is my erotic series, as well as the words I didn't say. Um, I'm also going to be speaking on entrepreneurship and goal uh, seeking. Um, and then, uh, of course, Black Rise Weekend is this June. Um, and I think other than that, I'm writing, I'm also recording on a podcast called Traces of Mika. And that's a reality series where I, I take people into my world through conversations with friends, ex-lovers, my, my children. Like we just talk about real and raw things. Um, so I'm excited about that project because I don't really let people into my world, into my headspace. As you can see, the things I can say, people don't like to hear sometimes. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but they can find me on Anything Is My Name, which is Tamika Newhouse. And that's to make it in-house on Instagram, Twitter, and my website. Okay. Oh, and BlackWritersWeekend.com, of course. Okay, can you give us the first date for Black Writers Weekend? And I understand that you have an award show, so let's get us the date for that so you can get start selling books. Yes. yes, it's June 7th through the 9th. Um, is when uh, the first day is June 7th with Creative Con, and then the 8th uh, will be Lit Crawl as well, like our book bash, and then the 9th will be our award show. This year is going to be more of a press conference, I think of like the NBA draft. So we'll be doing um, a ceremony like that, um, and then we'll be doing an after party. So, and that's from June 7th through the 9th, and you can go to blackwritersweekend.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tamika. Jay, did you want to wrap us up? Because I just saw that you blinked off the screen. So are you feeling okay? To wrap us oh, up? Oh, yeah. You know, I had to cough and stuff. Don't oh, forget, okay, okay. Don't okay. forget my section. I'm just saying. Note it. Okay. I'm, I got it. Thank you so much for joining us. And please, guys, check out Tamika and all the wonderful things that she is doing. And she's also part of the 25 Hottest this year, which is so fantastic. I know. Right. Magazine again. <laughs> she even imagined to do that. Oh, I have to show the magazine again. Hold on, wait. Uh, oh, wait. Never mind. Okay. Do it when you're in studio. Do it when you're in studio. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Huh. All right, All right so cool, babe. Check out everything that your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. And also, you can check out Just Right in Life there. Yes, you guys, bearing with us. We're not brilliant yet. We're not awesome yet. But we will get there. Maybe the fourth or fifth season will be, cool. will be amazing. And remember that. Wisdom is all around you. Yeah. You're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona. And I'm getting my nails done today. Bye. Like. No, you're not. And Jade, bye-bye. Bye-bye.